welcome to the Reverend Mel Show. And now, here's your host, Reverend Mel. Welcome to the Reverend Mel Show on TSRnetwork.com, where real people talk about real sex with really kinky people. And today, we're going to have a great, great time, but I want to wish everybody, I uh, hope that everybody had a great holiday. Hope that New Year's and uh, Christmas was awesome, and we're back up and rolling. And uh, I just hope that you guys got to share a lot of your time with your loved ones. And to all the people that are in the chat room that are watching, welcome. And um, to the show, and um, we're going to have an interesting conversation today. And the conversation that we're going to have is: Do long distance DS relationships work? I mean, how is it to maintain one? How can you, you know, be in a relationship long distance? What is the pitfalls? What are the good things about it? And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce my guest, who is one of my dearest friends and who I miss so much. And she's back there smiling. She looks so pretty. So I want to introduce my guest. And I call her Imp, but we don't call her Imp anymore. We call her Rain. Welcome. Woo how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, honey. You look exquisite. Well, thank you. Yeah, so um, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback. Can we? Can you say hello and, and tell everybody your name again? Hello. My name is Rain. Yeah, okay, let me turn this down. Maybe this is better. Testing one, two, three. What about this? Say testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. I don't know where it's from. I don't know if you have the player on that you're watching the show. No. Uh, mm hmm. Because when we were doing this before, the audio was perfect, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, so we're just hearing a little bit of feedback. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try to adjust it a little bit. So people are in the chat room. Welcome, and um, please put your name in the chat room. I'm going to say hello. I'm going to type in. This is so different than when we used to have um, the studio space. <laughs> mm -hmm. A little bit. What? Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, even even my video has changed because the lighting has has changed. So I'm gonna refocus it. What can what can go wrong on the internet will go wrong. I've learned that. Let me change the contrast. Ooh, there, that's a little bit better. Let me change my brightness. Okay. There, that's a lot better. I don't look so washed out even though I look like I'm I'm pale. What? I said now if I could remember my login for TSR, it would be in good shape. You don't need a login for TSR. What you gotta do is um just gotta go to the chat room and just click on the bottom, type in and type in with your uh you could create a name. So all the people that are watching you all you need to do is a pop up window will pop up and then all you do is type in the name that you want to be called in there and that's it. You don't really have to sign on to TSR anymore. We wanted to make it as easy and for everybody so you know as possible for people could have, you know, an easy way watching the show. But uh so so, Ray, you're still out in the East Coast. Yes, I am. Did you get, uh, were you affected by um, Hurricane Sandy at all? No, not really. No. Did you get high winds and stuff? We got some winds, but fortunately we didn't get any down trees or anything like that, so we made out pretty well. Well, that's a good thing. I'm still going to, why were you going to lose power? Oh, you didn't lose power? Oh, that's good. I'm going to pull up my audio settings. Oop, there you can see it on the page. Pull up my audio settings and see if I can figure out what's going on with the speakers and the sound because uh, it just doesn't sound proper to me. How about that? Testing one, two, three. Rain? No. Yeah, does that sound a little bit better in the chat room? Because we were getting some audio feedback, a little bit of... Um, a little bit of hissing. So there are people that are watching the show and uh, let me make sure that they are able to watch the show. This is so different from when we used to do this. I'm still touch and go with um, Google Hangout. That's what basically what we're on. 
are broadcasting there because it goes straight. They go, I hear the, I hear fine red mouth. Thank you. And um, River Butch, um, it's how is Rain's um, audio? Is it okay? Are you hearing feedback or is it just me hearing it? Rain, say something beautiful. Something. <laughs> <laughs> She's so quiet today. So the reason why I asked Rain to be my guest on the show was because I wanted to talk about something that's kind of um, something that we all, all, all have experienced and that it's um, long distance relationships and one of the problems with long distance relationships is that um, you meet somebody you have a great connection and then you have to kind of figure out how to see someone you know how to be you know travel out to see them them traveling out to see you so I want to talk about the pitfalls of of dating you know, over you know over the internet. So um, I'm, we're going to start talking with Rain about um, her relationship. Ha 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 ha. So, Rain. Yeah. You've known your dominant for how long? Over ten years. Ten years. So, but have you been in a long-term relationship for the last ten years? I'm talking about a DS relationship. With him, no. Yeah. So when did you, and um, have you talked to your sir to find out if it was okay that uh, you're able to uh, to talk about um, the relationship? What permissions do you have? Um, it's, it's pretty much up to my scrutiny. Uh-huh. As you know, I'm a very private person. Yeah. So there's only so much that I will share. Okay. So you won't tell me how big his cack is? No. <laughs> that put a pretty smile on your face. <laughs> so, but how, so, let's clarify a few things. You're married. Yes. And, um, and your husband is, is, is not your sir or he is... I mean, explain that situation, because people would like to know. Um, we worked out an arrangement. Mm -hmm. I needed more than he was able to give. Yeah. Um, so, but and they know each other. Oh yes. Oh yes. Dragon gave me away at my wedding. Oh, I remember. You know that. You were there. <laughs> I facilitated it. <laughs> in the power of invested in the state of Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> I will never live that down. Never. Never, never live it down. <laughs> Which is hysterical. So, yeah. and I've known Dragon for uh, 14, 15 years. A very long time. We used to all hang out in the AOL chat room. What, what was it called? SoCal Sub Fem. Yeah, and uh, that was that was a fun time. And we we were we would come home from work, and the first thing that we did was to get on the internet and spend hours and hours conversing. Yes, I remember those days. Yeah, those are those are awesome days. So, you and Dragon Dragon dis decided to. That dragon would be your sir, and how how does that work? I mean, is there any protocol? Is there anything that you that is that, that is required of you? You know, during the week. I mean, how do you keep in touch? It's it's just like any other relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we have daily contact. It's it's you know, when he's not working, I'm not working, and I am working. Yeah. We have texting, we have, you know, Skype, we have the phone. There's, there's a lack of communication. So, so you, you go on Skype and you're able to video cam and see each other? Oh, yeah. Do you ever do, an, do, you ever do any play over the Internet? That's not. Well, I'm not in this lifestyle. But yeah. 
So what what is it about this lifestyle that that draws you in? For me, I mean, I'm not going to say I don't enjoy the play. I do, but it's the mental aspect. Uh huh. So I am at work. I am in charge. I am, you know, I'm the one that has to lead. I'm the one that has to run things. I'm the one that has to, you know, handle every little issue, no matter what it is. But with the other side of my life, I get to let all that go. Uh huh. And just be, and just do, and just serve, and be happy. And be happy? Is that what you and said? And be happy. <laughs> so is there other people in your poly family? Are you in a poly family? Yes. And how many other people are involved in, in your poly family? There's three of us. Uh-huh. So, so Dragon and another girl and yourself, correct? Yeah. So how many times a year do you get to see your master? Do you call him master or sir? What do you call him? Daddy. Daddy? Mm-hmm. So far, it's been, it averages about twice a year. Uh-huh. So. Once I move home, that'll change, but until then. <laughs> I know, I got to see you the last time that you were here. I was kind of um, in a strange place, as you know, and uh, I ended up seeing him with some people. Uh, and you left and I wasn't able to say goodbye <laughs> and I waited for you to come so <laughs> okay I was glad to see you happy yeah I was um it was interesting I haven't played since that night which is you know a long time so how long do you get to stay here it depends on how much vacation time I have uh-huh and I can't use it all up in one visit, or then I won't have any to come back. Yeah. So, we try and do, you know, maybe a week, or just a long weekend, something like that, to leave time for later on in the year. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, could you see if you have, if you could ask Michael if he has um, a headset that he could give you, like an audio headset that you can plug into your computer. I wonder if that's what we're hearing is some of the sound, the 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 sound coming back. Um, let me see if we can find one. I don't know. We were trying to find me some headphones or something. But okay. We couldn't find anything. What I'm going to do is I will I will put the camera on me, and okay. I'll give you a couple seconds. All right. Yeah, because I don't know if you guys can hear the audio sound. I can hear the buzzing of it, and it is normally caused when um, when the speakers are on, and it's picking up all of the feedback. So, you know. But uh, talking about long-term relationships, um, I was in a very long-term relationship over the Internet, and he ended up moving to California and ended up living with me for roughly about four and a half years. Um... And so, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm very passionate about talking about this because I think that there's um, there's many ways to handle this. There's many ways to do this, and it can be successful uh, if all the parties are on the same page. But uh, it's not always always successful, and you can see that I'm playing around with my my color. <laughs> Just trying to get it balanced out a little bit more. There we go. That's a little bit better. It's a little warmer. So I was in a long-term relationship, like I said, for roughly about about five, almost close to five years. And when he moved out here, um, we got to know each other, and we should have gotten to know each other a differently. And so what I would have had him do, you know, from hindsight now, is I would have them find their own apartment. And so then we could date or see each other because I think that sometimes, you know, we kind of gloss over the fantasy of a long-term relationship. And there's a lot of long-term relationships that are successful and um, that, that are basically, you know, succeed in having a strong relationship. And sometimes, you know, the distance of a long-term relationship kind of makes the heart grow a little fonder and there's a little more passion when you get to see each other and it's um 
it's kind of exciting to you know be able to see them on cam. I used to watch my my submissive used to fall asleep, you know, and he used to leave his webcam on. This is way before we used to have Skype, and I forgot how we did. I think it was on on Yahoo or something like that. So we'd see each other every day. So we really got to know each other. And uh, but has anybody in the chat room have been in a long term relationship that's been long distance? We would love to know. If you could type it into the chat room, it would be great. And I'm just waiting for Rain to come back um, with the headset so to see if that will adjust the sound a little bit because I was getting a lot of hissing and it was really hard to hear her. So I want to be able to turn her up a little bit, and uh, but the hissing was getting too, too hard. So anybody in the chat room um, been in a long-term relationship that's long distance? How about you, River Butch? Have you ever done that? She's not commenting. But if you're watching the show, click on the um, the chat room and you know come in the chat room and share some questions with us, and uh, you'll be willing to uh, to give to our guests any questions that you wish to ask. But. Um, Oh, River Butch says it depends on what you call long distance. Um, you're right; it does depend. Um, my submissive was in Ohio. I was in California. We flew out. I flew out and met him in July for my dad's 80th birthday party, and then he came out during Thanksgiving and spent a week with us and then at Christmas I flew out to Ohio and uh, him and I drove back and it kind of altered altered my life a little bit and at first it was absolutely amazing but we really we really needed to get to know each other a little bit better I thought that I knew him well but long distance can be someone that you know, does a lot of traveling that's always gone. Long distance could be a hundred miles away. Uh, in Los Angeles, a hundred miles away with traffic is is pretty pretty hard to to get to uh, to see each other. Sometimes it's really difficult because it you know the traffic it's you know bumper to bumper, and you spend half of your time on to um, onto the you know the freeway trying to get there fighting with traffic. And we've got rain back and let me see. Hello, welcome back. Could not find it. Okay. Thank I tried you. to move things around a little bit, see if I could move it away, further away. Yeah, or maybe even a little closer. Because maybe sounding it's bouncing off the walls. Something. Something was causing the hissing. And um, River Butch in the chat room says, um, I asked a question about long term relationships and she says it depends on what you call long distance. So so you, you talk on Skype, you talk on the phone, you come out here twice a year. Is that fulfilling for you? You know, it's one of the situations where we're, we do what we have to do before we can do what we want to do. And right now, this is what I have to do. Yeah. Once I'm out there, it won't be an issue anymore. But right now, I'm not. I'm 3,000 miles away. Yeah. So it's, you know, is it ideal? No. Do we make it work? Yes. That's what's important as long as everybody is happy and, how, and things have a goal to work toward. And how, how do you make it work? I mean, what, what can you do to, to make a long-distance relationship be better? That's all dependent on the people in the relationship. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do this with anybody else. I know that. Yeah. Because I know me. Yeah. But well, because we were so close prior, uh huh. That's the only reason I can. Her, uh, can you repeat that because your camera froze? I said. Because we were so close prior to actually starting the relationships that we have now, 
Uh huh. That's the only reason why I can do it. Uh huh. Because I can. We know each other. Mm hmm. So, if I come into a situation where I'm sitting there going, "Okay, what should I do?" I can hear his voice in the back of my head. Because you know him so well. Right. So, it's a Saturday night. Okay. You're home, and you know that he's out and might be playing. How does that make you feel that you're I'm not there? I'm happy for him. Okay. Explain what makes you happy for him. I'm happy when he's happy. If he's having a good time and he's playing with, whether it be he's playing with Jade or he's, I'm glad that he's happy. I'm glad that he's having fun. I'm glad that whatever need that he's having at that moment is being met. Mm -hmm. Am I a little disappointed that I can't meet it? Yes. But ultimately, I'm happy because He's getting what he needs. Mm -hmm. And I can see that look he gets in his eye when he plays. So I can see that glimmer. I can see that that the little demon inside that comes out to play. I can see it. And it makes me smile. And it makes me happy for him. Why shouldn't I be? Yeah. River Butch in the chat room says, "No, it's not always fulfilling, but yes, we can find ways to make it work if we're if you're dedicated." And I think that's what you are at this point in your relationship is that you're dedicated to make it work. Do you agree with me on that, Rain? Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. How so? Why? So what good would that do anybody involved? Mm -hmm. If I'm invested. Yeah. I'm invested. He's invested. Lord knows it took it took over ten years for me to finally come to him. He had invested ten years into me before we ever started this relationship. Uh-huh. Who are we gonna throw that away? What was what was what did it feel like when the decision was made after all this time? Like a huge rock had been lifted off of me. And now how does it feel? I'm home. I like that. I like that a lot. So what advice would you have for somebody that wants to get into a relationship with someone that is long distance? What would you tell them? Be careful. Of? Of? Of, of everything. Yeah. It, like I said, it's... Physically, we may be long distance, but I don't consider it that way. Because he's been a part of my life for so long mm -hmm. that I can't imagine it without him there. Mm -hmm. So, how distant is it really? No, I can't just hop in the car and drive over to his house. Or hop in the car and meet him at the club. Uh -huh. But he's still no further than a text message or a phone call away. Uh -huh. And he's always with me, in my heart, in my head. Physically, okay, yeah, physically there's a distance issue. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you have to really... You have to be confident in your relationship. You have to be honest. Mm -hmm. You have to be open. You have to communicate. 
But how is that any different from any other relationship? Well, River chat in the in the chat room or River Butch in the chat room. <laughs> you like that one? Oh boy, uh, I need I need some coffee. I didn't have any. This Uh, Google is going to be closed next week. Hello, Ming is in the chat room. Ming and Michael, welcome. Welcome to the chat room. Um, River Butch says it can be an emotional roller coaster at times. And this won't, this is what I don't think people are ready to deal with. Yeah, it can be a roller coaster. Um, and you know my ex of Phil, and it was long distance, and then he moved in with me. So, would you. Read, whoop, what was that noise? Whoa! So, this ridiculous noise, do you guys hear it? Or is it just coming in on my side? No, I think it's You can hear it? Okay, I think it's better now. So, um, one of the questions that I want to ask you, Rain, is that if you were not going to be moving back here to Los Angeles, it was what? I would whether or not he could have me, but I know. Yeah, your 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 sound is breaking up again. So, uh, can you repeat that, please? I'm so sorry. This has been a really hard show. <laughs> and now, on whether if he would still want to have that kind of relationship, considering I was never moving back. Yeah. So, the the ultimate goal of people when they have relationship is to be committed and to be with each other. That is the ultimate goal. That's really why people get into relationships. Does the same thing apply in a DS relationship? Is that the ultimate goal is for two people to be together or to be included in a poly family? What is your I ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to physically be home so that I can serve him in person versus the way that we're working it now. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm going to do a testing on here because the audio is bad. I'm really having a hard time. I'm going to add a Skype camera to this and see if we can get her on Skype and see if it sounds a little bit better. Here we go. Okay. Might be a little clear. I'm going to take off the other one. Uh, just give me a second, everybody. Because I want, I want to hear everything that she has to say. And uh, maybe it's just me. Okay. Let's see. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on her other close-up. Here's your close-up. Hello. And maybe that's what the problem is, is that uh, Skype and my program are not liking each other very much. So uh, let's see if this works. Rain, say something, please. I'm here. I'm here. Does that seem a little bit better, everybody? I, maybe I should have had her come straight into the chat room, so and we should have just done two cameras. But I kind of like things to look really clear, but they don't sometimes. And you never know how this is going to react. So there we go. So let's let's talk about um, protocol. Is there protocol that that you and your sir do? Is there things that um, that you have to do for him as far as protocol is concerned? It's... He expects me to be me. Uh -huh. The best me that I can be and grow to be better because the better I am, the better I serve him, the better I reflect on him. But as far as specific daily protocol, I, mean, I, I send him good morning messages every day. I send him night messages every day. I text him throughout the day and let him know how my day is going. Uh huh. If 
I'm upset about anything, if I'm concerned about anything, if, you know, it's just like any other relationship. Mm -hmm. The other person in the loop as to what's going on with you. I didn't hear that last phrase. I'm so sorry. I said it's just like with any other, you know, relationship. Uh -huh. I am in the loop as to what is going on with me. Uh huh. All the time. Um, that way, there's no surprises. Do you, way, so, you know. Yeah. I'm mood. Or I'm you know upset one day or something like that. I try really hard not to, for lack of a better term, take it out on them. Uh huh. But we all slip. Uh huh. He reminds me when I slip. <laughs> <laughs> so how I mean, can he do discipline long distance, and and how does that work? I try very very hard for that not to have to happen. <laughs> um, because <laughs> just just knowing that he's upset, I I curl up and just like fall. Uh huh. I and you know me, I'm not really a big crier. Yeah. But it it upsets me. It upsets me deeply, and so I become a wreck. And there are times when he tells me, you know, he doesn't have to punish me because I will punish myself more than what's honestly necessary in the situation. What's the difference between having a long-term relationship with in a DS BDSM relationship than a vanilla relationship? Is there any difference, do you think? Just the test. We're not taking any of the sadomasochism or anything into it. Yeah, and um, do you think that there's there's a different mindset with with BDSM because of the fact that it is a lot of it is about service and a lot of it is about having um, someone. I don't think anyone can really actually control someone's life, but we can. Um, can guide it. Yeah, we can guide it. I mean, you don't hear a lot of people from long distance relationships in the vanilla world. Normally they, they meet, they date, they get married, they have children, they get divorces, you know, and we all get old. But with a, with DS there's an extra dynamics that is added to it and that it's, you know, there is one person who is the master or the mistress or the sir that is basically guiding another human being through the process. You have to have a level of trust. And trust is something that, that is a given or is it something that has to be earned? <laughs> you know, there's a very thin line. Uh huh. Because you have to want to trust someone for them to be able to earn it. Uh huh. Someone once told me when I was speaking about a former dumb cop uh, who wanted to get back into a relationship with me, and I said, I don't know if I can trust him. Mm hmm. <laughs> He says, either you trust or you don't. It's true. They can jump through hoops until the moon turns blue. But if you don't want to trust them, you're not going to. Yeah, I think trust is, is probably the most important thing in a relationship and to build that up. And I think that your relationship with Dragon, you know, over the last 10 years have built up that trust with each other. It has. I, I trust him implicitly. Do you think that you would be doing this with someone that, let's say you were on the internet, you met somebody, and you, you know, flew out to meet them, and you connected?
you think you would be as open to doing this with someone that you really didn't know? No. Absolutely not. It, what are some of the things, I, I know you don't want to go into the private aspect of your relationship with Dragon and it's not right for me to ask, but what I want to ask about is that when you both decided that um, that he was going to be he was going to be your sir or your daddy, um, what are some of the things you talked about about the things you could and could not do? There's really not could and could not do in regards to what? Um, Let's face it. Your life. 3,000 miles away. Yep. I'm not involved in the local community here. Um, I don't have play partners here. Mm-hmm. I don't go to marches. I don't go to parties. Yeah. Um, it's not an interest of mine. Yeah. Everything that I want in regards to this lifestyle is in LA right now. Yeah. So that being said, and him knowing that, mm -hmm. there really aren't boundaries that need to be set. For the for the people that that have just come in the chat room or that 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 really don't know Rain, uh, she used to be called Imp. I still call her imp every once in a while, and I try. I really try. I really try. And uh, she moved out to um, to Pennsylvania, just right next door to Intercourse, Pennsylvania, in between the two blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it. We did a show on on you know Pennsylvania with um, Intercourse, Pennsylvania, and blue balls and stuff like that so they really don't have a lot of places to go out and to do BDSM activities. Do you find that that difficult or are you just really encouraged about coming back here and getting your life started back here? I just it's when we moved out here mm -hmm. I knew it was temporary. Yeah. For those who are watching who know me, and you know this very well, when I form friendships, close friendships, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to do that in a place that I know I need. Mm -hmm. Well, I consider you part of my family. We've been friends for a very, very long time, and you've always been there for me, and uh, you've you've never wavered from that friendship, and I do appreciate that. You know, it's been really remarkable, and it's you know when I was first told that that um, that that you were you know being owned by Dragon, you know, I I really didn't know what to think about it because you know I, I know you all and you know that you and I have had that talk and mm -hmm. uh, and what I'm really pleased is to see you know how much um, you respect him I mean is that a big part of respecting your sir I mean is that really where you really start that you have to respect them before you can serve them it helps mm -hmm. I mean it really helps mm -hmm. um, but we were friends first. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, I can still remember the very first night we met. And where was that? Oh, that was a Queen Mary social. Oh my God. <laughs> that was ages ago. <laughs> um, for the audience. For the audience that don't that do not know what Queen Mary was, Queen Mary was a a a trans bar, which was awesome, where they had a lot of um, absolutely incredible, beautiful, you know, transsexuals, and they would put on shows. But we would do one night a month, and it was Jamira who who put it on, and we do um, Jamira and Ken, and we do one night of karaoke, and we would do a social, and it was jam packed. So. Crazy. It was crazy. It was so much fun. 
I mean, it was it was everything was light and airy, and you know, we were all from the same AOL chat room, and we all knew each other. We all partied with each other. It was a really fun time, and you know. I don't see very many people from that period of time coming out to the clubs anymore, you know, which is kind of, you know, kind of sad because we were a pretty tight group of people. So what happened that night? Did he approach you? Did you approach him? I mean, what was, you know, the chemistry happened? Or was it chemistry? By mutual friend. You were introduced by a mutual friend? By a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. And um, it just the, the banter back and forth started right there. Uh huh. It started right there, and here we are, twelve years later, and it hasn't stopped. <laughs> it it just hasn't stopped. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, I left social that night, and the very next day, and then I were talking online, and we talked online for hours upon hours upon hours and it just kept and the friendship grew and the trust grew and my respect for him grew mm -hmm. that's to the point where I, I can't imagine him not being this I just can't could you do it if you didn't whoa <laughs> what the fuck is that noise <laughs> that's hysterical I didn't do anything. Let me turn things down. That was, listen to that. That was there. It's done. Wow. Google's closing down next week for uh, for maintenance. I think it's having a lot of problems. So we probably won't be doing a show next week. <laughs> so because they're going to be closing down from two o'clock for for roughly about three to five hours so maybe we might be able to but I don't want to schedule a show if we're going to have problems because we're having lots of little problems with um with all of this so it's it's done wow that was like <laughs> I guess it I guess we're talking about a hot subject and the computer just couldn't handle it <laughs> but Anybody in the chat room, please, if there's some questions that you want to ask my guest, please um, type them in the chat room and we will get to all of your questions. We have Ming and Michael in the chat room. We have um, River Butch. And there's a quite a few other people, but they have not been typing. And I don't know if we lost any of the 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 show because I'm looking at the viewership. So if you can still see the show, please type in the chat room that everything is okay. So we know, because you guys are my eyes, my ears, and I'm just waiting to see if um, to continue. We've been trying out. We've been trying this out um, because I really like the fact that everything goes straight onto YouTube. So we've been trying. Um, I don't think I can hear you. Can I? Can I? Imp, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, because you're so quiet. You know, she's so low, I can hardly hear you. <laughs> what? Yeah, you're breaking. She's breaking up really badly. So, um, really badly. I can hardly hear her. So I don't know why she's breaking up. Because we, we tried this. She's, she's my tester. Imp is my tester. When I want to try something on Skype, I test her and, you know. Oh, she's moving. What are you? Hello? Is that a little bit better? I think it's a little better. She still looks so pretty. <laughs> I love her new haircut. It looks so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, her speakers are really, I mean, her mic is really low for some reason. Now I can't hear you at all. So this is the technical problem show. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why it does this. But uh, I should have had you come into Skype. I could probably still do that, but you don't. You don't go on. I mean, onto on Google Plus. You don't do that, though, do you? Pardon? You did do that before. 
well, we could always do that. I could always give you an invite and you can come in. We could see if that works better. Because this is ridiculous. <laughs> Let me give you an invite and have you come in and, and you know, go to Google. Okay, I'm going to invite her. Let's see if we can do this without being kicked off. Invite more people. Okay, I'm trying to invite more people and it's not letting me. There it is. Uh, invite. Yeah, I want to invite others. Okay, let's see what this does. Yeah, Google's having a really lots of problems. It's just not letting me. Nope, it's just not, I'm going to close it. Now it's stuck. <sighs> Close. This is ridiculous. I don't know what people are seeing. I don't know if they're just seeing. It won't close now. <sighs> Hello? <laughs> and I can't hear you at all. Oh, there you are. But I can't close the, um, it won't close the invite. <sighs> Can you guys still see me? Or do you guys just see the white box in the chat room? And we've been having lots of problems with our internet here too. You know, our internet is kind of funky. Lost the visual on YouTube. Okay. Here comes some noise. This is ridiculous. I can't close this out. They've lost my visual. Uh-oh. Oh, this is ridiculous. Um, I'm going to tell them to re... Hold on. Okay, just telling them to refresh it. This is ridiculous. It is kind of crazy. It is. I mean, it's, um, I can't get the window to, um, I can't get the no. invite window to, sh can you see it? I'm going to open up TSR Network on my other computer. I'm going to see what we're seeing here. Well, one good thing about um, doing all of this is that you learn the pitfalls and the mistakes. Let me see if it's coming up over on my other computer. Oh, Ming says it's all good here. Oh, then you can see us, Ming. Okay, good. Then I'm just worrying about shit. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's good. It's good. It's all right. There, that's okay. I mean, let's get back to our conversation then. Then we can see. Um, if you have lost it, please refresh the page, everybody. So, so Rain, how long do you think you can do this long distance? As long as I have to until I get home. And Michael, your your uh, husband does not have a problem with this. He's not a jealous person. It doesn't interfere with our relationship at all. Uh huh. If anything, it helps. Mm hmm. It helps in what way? There's only one person that I submit to. You know me. Yeah. I'm not a, how shall we put it, weak-willed individual. Uh-huh. Dragon keeps me in check. Mm-hmm. Because, let's face it, I'm stubborn. I know it. I have a temper. Uh-huh. I know it. <laughs> Um, anybody that spends any amount of time with me 
will know it. Mm -hmm. And he helps me keep all that under control. Riverbridge, I think, got a really big kick out of the fact when you said that you're stubborn. You know, so you know, I, I want I, I wonder, am. <laughs> I wonder if it. I wonder if it takes a stubborn, strong slave or submissive to be in a long-term relationship. Strong-willed. A strong-willed. Determined. Mm -hmm. um, you also have to be able to trust. Mm -hmm. And you have to be trustworthy. What makes somebody trustworthy? You know, that's a... It's a character trait. Either you have the moral fortitude to do what's right mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. or you don't. Yeah. But if you're going to make a long-distance relationship, hell, if you're going to make any relationship work, mm -hmm. you have to have it. Yeah. Because let's face it, the minute you lose trust, things start to deteriorate. Uh-huh. And once that happens, you have to work ten times as hard to try and salvage it. What would be something that would be not trustworthy in your mind? As far as, as, far as a DS relationship goes? Yes. Neglect? Um, that's a big one, uh -huh. especially for long distance. What does neglect feel like? I mean, what is it? What does it feel like, or what? How do you see neglect? I don't have to deal with that with him. Mm -hmm. Oh, past relationships. Ignoring needs, mm -hmm. um, not not following through on if you set specific goals, either together as a DS couple, yeah, or. If a master sets the goals for his slave and says, this is what I'm going to do to help you achieve those goals, mm -hmm. and then not following through. Mm -hmm. Because especially long distance, if you're working on something together, the slave looks forward to that time. Uh -huh. Um. So I can only imagine if you're looking forward to that and then it doesn't happen, what that would feel like. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I haven't had to deal with that because he doesn't, you know him as well as I do, he doesn't make promises unless he plans on, on fulfilling. Yeah. He doesn't say we're going to do X and then not do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the reason why I have gravitated towards him for so long. He does keep his word. So he does what he says and he says what he means. So consistency is really important. It's key. Uh huh. You have to. Um. River Butch in the chat room said, "Sometimes being stubborn and hard-headed is what drives us," and I will agree with her. You know, because I'm a oh, Taurus. Yeah. I'm a Taurus, so I'm very stubborn and hard-headed at times. So, if you were to do, oh, there it goes again. Man, this noise is terrible. Just give it a second. Just work it out. Wow. Pardon. There we go. It's done.
I think it's Dragon. He's 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 trying, he's he's doing something to our computer. No, just joking. So I even forgot the question that I was going to ask. So if you have hindsight on this, would you have, you know, knowing everything that you know, would you still have done a long distance relationship? Absolutely. Yeah. And how does it enrich your life? He, he he has made me a better me. How so? There was a time, and you'll remember, when I didn't care much about me. It didn't matter as long as the tops that I was playing with were happy with what went on, as long as, you know, it, that was all that mattered. Mm -hmm. I didn't worry about my health. I didn't worry about much of anything when it came to me. But he's helped me learn that, you know, me being healthy, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, all of these things factor into my ability to serve him. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not whole, how can my service be whole? It all kind of goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So I've learned, you know, if there's certain things I kind of need to give a damn about. You know, there's there's a joke that, that I've made with people. Dead submissives don't serve. <laughs> You've heard me say that. <laughs> yeah, they sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> and dead and dead masters, <laughs> they don't master. <laughs> oh. Oh. You got me on that one. <laughs> so it's one of those things. Oh. So you know now that now that I've found now that okay I shouldn't say I found it. It's been here for. 12 years, I was just too stubborn to accept it and, and you know, do what I should have done. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm home, I kind of want to stay there. So he forces me to take better care of myself physically, emotionally, psychologically. You know, strive to do the best that I can do because, quite frankly, you know, it makes me better for him. So how does he force you? Or how does he how does he do this? How does how does he do this to you? All up here. And so it's, it's all all through my head. So it's 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 mentally it's it's telling you that you're what you're worth it. It it I mean you know, give me a no, little scenario. It's it's Baby, you need to do X. Okay. And you know me. Yeah. I, I don't... It's, <laughs> it's just the way it works. You don't do X very well. <laughs> Somebody else came over to me and said, you need to do X. Excuse me? <laughs> And who are you? <laughs> so you consider yourself a slave, not a submissive, correct? Correct. Okay, give us the reason why you consider yourself. And for the people that, that are watching the show that will be that will find us on YouTube and that will know it, that will be searching for fifty shades of, of gray and that <laughs> want to know more about this lifestyle, what sets you apart from a submissive to a slave? 
maybe that might give a little bit more insight on service and how you feel about the DS, which is um, dominant and slave relationship or dominant and submissive relationship. It all depends on how you look at it. You know, there's a lot of things I just don't want to have a say about. I want him to tell me I have to do this. Um, oh, Google went away. Yeah, I know. I just noticed it. <laughs> Google's having a really hard time tonight. I'm re I'm I'm redoing I'm redoing it. Let's see if it's up. Yes, I'm going to type in the chat room to refresh. Yeah, so it it is there. It is there. It's back. There we go. Refresh the player. Yeah, now we're getting we're now we're now we're now we're getting into into the nitty gritty of relationships, and this is really important because it is you know we are talking about DS relationships. We're not talking about vanilla relationships, but we're talking about DS relationships, which is dominant and slave or dominant and submissive people having relationships that have play certain roles. Could you do this in a non DS relationship ring. <laughs> no. Why? There's no way. Because my submission to him comes natural. Uh huh. It just is. I don't have to work at it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have to force myself to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't. But anyone else. She's a completely different side of me. Uh huh. Completely different side of me. I I don't. Outside of him, I don't take orders well. Okay, I don't take them at all. Mm hmm. Um, I'm very much in charge. I'm I'm very. Heavy-handed. Mm hmm. Um. But when it comes to him, I can't. Mm -hmm. I just can't. I, I can't bring myself to do it. It it the thought never even goes through my head. Uh huh. Which is probably a really good thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the reaction would the reaction would be very good to that. So what what you basically need from a dominant is consistency. You need them to know that thyself to be strong and to you know, be consistent in in discipline or consistent in um, the mental support. Because River Butch said in the chat room, she goes, "It's the ultimate form of mental bondage." I like that. It is, and they have to be stronger than me. Mm-hmm. And you, you've been around long enough to know. Uh huh. You, you've seen where I've been. Mm hmm. They have to be stronger than me. Yeah. And he is. He absolutely, without a question, is. So, what. Where is his strength in in handling you? What does he know how to guide you? Where does he get his information on how to guide you? I mean, is it from your last, you know, twelve years of of a friendship? He pretty much knows me like a book. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there's very little that I could throw at him that would be a surprise. Uh huh. He's seen it. Uh huh. He he knows how I react to certain things. Um, every once in a while, he'll he'll you know, out of the blue, he'll say something that I I never said that. He said, I know. You didn't have to. Mm hmm. I know X, Y, and Z are happening, so this is how you're feeling. Uh huh. 
So he's intuitive to your thoughts and your feelings. Do you think that makes a marks him as a, as as a good observant dominant? Because it's really important, I think, to be observant. We're not oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're not mind readers, but yeah, no one is. Yeah, no one is. But you you know, like I said, long distance relationships, everyone is different. Uh huh. And I'm really lucky with mine. Mm hmm I'm very lucky with mine. Because we've had that time prior. Uh-huh. I mean, think about it. How many times were we at the club? And, you know, I would be talking to you, or talk, and I would be upset, or whatever, and all of a sudden, he was right behind me. Mm-hmm. Just reminding me that he was there. Mm-hmm. And then he would walk away. It's so subtle saying. Yeah. Use that time. Yeah. Like I said, it me like the back of my back of his hand. So when, when, when you guys text each other like during the week and stuff like that and you know to keep in contact, I mean, are they just like, you know, what's going on with your life? I mean, you know, what are some of the conversations that you can share with us? It's it's everything. Mm -hmm. It's anything from I'm having a crappy day at work to I miss you to I miss my spot on the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, to, you know, I hope to be coming out to visit. You know, when can I come out? Anything. There's, there's nothing that's out of bounds for us to talk about. And I'm random. I'm yeah. absolutely random. Mm -hmm. I'll send things out of the blue that have absolutely nothing to do with anything. It's just, oh, by the way. <laughs> You're bipolar. No, just joking. <laughs> bipolar texter. So, um, yeah. <laughs> God, if you were bipolar, bisexual, and a switch, you'd really be fucked up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh my God! It's the year of the buys. <laughs> so, do you anticipate any change when you actually do move back here? <laughs> River Butch like that one. <laughs> any change in what way? In your DS relationship? Other than the fact that I'll actually be there. Uh huh. Um, all I can say is every day it gets stronger. Mm -hmm. And if we can continue to get stronger 3,000 miles away, I can only imagine how strong we can get when I'm right around the storm. Mm -hmm. And can be there whenever he needs me to be. But does distance make the heart grow fonder? And when you're there 100%, you know, will it will it lessen the effect? I'm just curious. No. Yeah. No. It's it's not gonna lessen anything. Mm-hmm. Um before I moved I couldn't imagine him not being in my life. Uh-huh. And I was there. Yeah. I saw him every week. Yep. We got to see you every weekend. <laughs> every weekend. Yeah, it was great. You know, every weekend, and, and we chatted during the week, and everything else. Yeah, it's stronger now, but that's just because the bond is stronger, not because of the distance. Mm -hmm. If anything, there are days when the distance just makes me want to curl up in a ball and cry. And how does it, how, how do you deal with that? It's not always easy. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know he'll remind me he misses me too. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm doing what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And. Soon I'll be back there where I need to be. 
then we talk it out. Mm -hmm. and by the end of talking it out, I'm you know able to sit upright and put makeup back on my face, and I don't look like a kiss member anymore. Mm -hmm. And and we go on with our day. Yeah. Um, River Butch in the chat room said, I think that distance makes the emotion and love stronger because we don't have the 24 like others may. Um, but it's some of that fantasy. Um, I remember when I had the long-term, long-distance relationship, and there's so many people that email me from all around the world wanting to meet me, you know, telling me they want to serve me. And because of that one past experience, I kind of like put everybody, you know, at bay. I mean, I can't even hold on to a relation 24/7 here in in the real world, let alone on the internet, you know. And, and <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know, relationships have never been my cup of tea. I really don't know how to do relationships. And it would be great if I could find somebody that understood that and could could handle me. But um, all of the fantasies. I mean, I remember doing. You know, the sex on a webcam, you know, in order to connect with, with Phil and the things we'd write each other and the excitement that was there. And it was exciting. But I think one of the biggest problems that, that I had was that I really didn't get to know him. It was more of a sexual thing, even though he was, he was, said he was wired slave and then when we were involved in a relationship he was no longer a submissive or no longer wanting to be a slave and he wanted to be a switch and it changed the whole dynamic of our relationship and River Butch says a relationship is a two-way streak one alone cannot make a DL relationship work that's right it is yeah. it is a two-way street so he gives you he meets your needs do you meet his needs? This. According to him, I do what I can do from where I'm at. Mm -hmm. If I didn't, there'd be a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, when he asks me to do things, I try and do them to the best of my ability as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And she's really. <laughs> Whoop, there we go, the noise again. One second. That was a fun one. I'm going to enjoy watching the 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 archives on this one. This is hysterical. I don't know if you guys heard that, but it was like that's why I was dancing. Um, we did Kinky Summer and Kinky Christmas, and uh, Imp was so remarkable in helping me with those two events. I mean, I could not have done it without her. Um, you know, a lot of people, they have different groups that can help them in putting on events, but the only person that I have that helped me and the support is is um, is Rain. She has been there for me. She has flown in, her and Michael, and have done a lot of the grunt work and, you know, camped out at my place, and we have been able to put on those two events that were really good events. It was really yes. the starting up of, of people weren't doing the events like we were doing at that time. You know, kinky summer and kinky Christmas was awesome. And, you know, I just, you know, and she was also um, pretty instrumental in helping me with BDSM Pride Day, too. So uh, she's there. She's a hard worker. She is consistent. And uh, she has offered a friendship that it's, um, it is a forever friendship. And it's something that is, that is very rare these days to find someone that has the integrity that she has. And I thank you for that. Well, thank you. Well, I don't know who else to meet. I know that, honey. And it's really, you know, I'm really glad that, that you know, Dragon is your sir and that, you know, that he, he completes you. I mean, it's really important, I think, in life to find one or two or three people, whatever it takes to complete you. And I, I think that, um, you know, you're in, you're in a marriage with Michael, and I think that it's a, it's a great wonderful communicative relationship and to have something added on which is a, a long-term DS relationship has to be pretty exciting you're a very special woman you know to have all of these people love you so much I'm a very lucky lady <laughs> I want to sing the song luck is a lady tonight <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and get crazy. But in the chat room, come on, ask some questions. Come on, just you know, put the questions out there. If you'd like to ask questions of my wonderful guest Rain or of myself, um, you know, we'll be very, very honest and open with you, and uh, and give you the best answer that we can possibly give you. I don't know how many people have lost us when we were, when we went out, but it's working. It's looking good. I'm looking at my other computer, and Rain is looking hot. <laughs> <laughs> I love the red hair. I think it looks awesome. Thank so, you. So, if you were to give advice to a dominant about a long-term, long-distance relationship, what would that be from a point of view of a slave? Truly be who you say you are. Mm -hmm. If you set parameters, stick to them mm -hmm. all the time, not just when it's convenient. It takes a lot of work to be consistent and to set parameters and always, always be on your toes. I mean, dominants get tired too. You know, sometimes, yes, yes. Sometimes we get exhausted. It's like, yeah, they, can, can I do this? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really bad for a dominant to say is, I don't care. Just go do what you want to do. Just leave me alone. Let me sleep, you know. Yeah, it takes a lot of work to be a good dominant. It does. I mean, I know that a lot of times my relationships, whether it's a long distance or a short distance relationship, don't work is because I've been inconsistent. And that's one of the reasons why I have not reached out and gotten back into a DS relationship because I, I'm not ready. You know, I'm not ready to take on that that caring and nurturing of another human being because that's basically what it is. It is caring and nurturing. And um, do you get nurtured in your relationship? Oh, yeah. And do you believe that he cares? Oh, Absolutely. River Butch in the chat room says it takes dedication and requires a lot of understanding. Yeah, it does. And especially to, you know, we tack the DS onto long distance relationship. And that, that adds a whole new element to it than just like, you know, vanilla long distance relationships. Because how do you tell somebody, well, you know, my sir is, you know, 3,000 miles away? And, mo and what is most of the people's reaction to you when you tell them that? Rain? Well, you know, quite honestly, I have a very small circle of friends out here. Mm -hmm. um, and the few that do know about my lifestyle choice, you know, they're <laughs> considering the fact that he was basically my best friend. <laughs> Remember Butch in the chat room says, they tell you that you're nuts. <laughs> A couple of them have. Oh, they absolutely have. That's sad. <laughs> but then, mm -hmm. but, and this is the part that I love, and I can remember it, this happened one, it happened not too long ago, actually. One of them told me I was nuts, and not ten minutes later, he sent me a text out of the blue that completely made me giggle out loud. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a giggler. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I can get you to stopped, giggle. And they looked at me. Yeah. And they're like, "You just giggle?" <laughs> I'm like, yes. As a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> And they're like, why? And they like, well, I'm not sharing. <laughs> that's between me, him, and phone. Mm -hmm. That's where it stops. And then they're like, well, you know, if, if he can get that reaction, put that smile on your face, I guess it's not so bad. Well... I've seen a difference since you've been with Dragon, you know, a huge difference, and, and we're friends, and, you know, we try to keep in touch on, on Skype and say hello to each other, 
And but you know, um, Rain and I have um, have the sort of relationship that we can go a couple months without speaking, and then the next time we speak, it's like we've never lost those moments in time that we'll always be friends. And uh, but I have really seen a remarkable change. Um, in her attitude toward herself and her appearance and um, just a, a win-win situation this has been for you. I, I firmly believe that. Thank you. Oh, there goes that noise again. I'm going to dance every time it does that. So River Butch in the chat room says, when you give in your heart and you're loved, you know no distance. I like that. Yeah, I think maybe I should start opening up to other people across the country instead of being so closed-minded. I made a mistake, you know. I I picked kind of the wrong person. So, yeah, that integrity is important. It is. Honesty is important. And your work. Can't survive without it. Pardon? Relations not survive without it. Yeah, and also. Um, your word is your bond. You say you're going to do it, you do it. I think that's one, I think it's, what, I don't know why I've got to stop, but I'm talking about dom drop, where doms no longer want to play, and have you ever experienced that? Where you, you've, you know, hot and heavy, and then all of a sudden there was no play? In past relationships. Uh I was the one that's. Yeah. And the reason why? Any from. Well, no. The biggest reason would be I lost respect. Yeah, lost her respect. I can understand that. Oh. I want to thank you, honey. And she's. she. We did this short notice today because I, I text her and says, hey, what are you doing this evening? I, I wasn't going to do a show tonight. I'm not sure about next week because of the fact that um, Google is going to be doing some upgrading. They're going to be doing some maintenance on their site. So I don't know what they're going to be doing. Every time they do it, they change something. So I don't want to do a show and have it end up like, you know, with all the audio problems and all the problems that we can get. But uh, at the last minute... Um, you know, Rain said yes that she would do the show. I'm River Butch says I think what happens more is when it becomes a routine, and that's that's what I was getting at. Is long distance relationships not a routine, and when it becomes a sh a short distance relationship, can it become a routine? What do you think, Rain? Um. I think that all depends on the people involved. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not, you know, they allow the spontaneity to leave. Mm -hmm. Whether they get so comfortable that everything just becomes old hat. Yeah. Um, but it, it depends on how bad two people want it. Yeah. Or in our instance, how bad three people want it. Yep. So you're comfortable with Polly? I would not be able to do it with anybody other than him and my husband. That's good to know. I guess I can't... I've learned that about myself. I guess I'm not invited into your family. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean now. I know that. Well, Rain, I want to thank you for watching the show. I mean, for coming on the show. Oh, it's one of those nights. It's one of those nights. And I want to thank River Butch and Ming and all the other people that came into the chat room but did not type in anything because there's a lot of people watching it. There is, you know, it's there's quite a few people that are in the chat room and that have been watching the show but they're not making comments. And uh, you've been watching. Thank you so much, Rain. I know that she's had a busy schedule today and that she's got other things on her plate that she has to go attend to. And uh, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank you, honey. No problem, no. Thank you. And you guys, it's the end of the show, and I want to thank you all for coming on to um, 
to TSR Network and watching the show with all of the little technical problems that we had today. It doesn't matter. We got out some great information. Rain was delightful to you know, have on the show. And I just want, and next week we're not going to do a show because we're worried that, um, that Google is going to you know, conk out on us. So we'll see you guys in two weeks. And thank you, River Butch, for coming on and for Ming and all the other people that, that are watching the show. And remember that um, we are changing the world one vanilla at a time. Thank you so much. Ooh, the show is over. Rev Mel needs to go and masturbate. We'd like to thank some groovy people. So watch their names on the screen and go tell them that they're great. Ow! Ooh, wow. Rev Mel is a kooky, nutty gal. I love her. The show is over, but we'll be back soon, like look around the side or something, ooh, the show is over, right now, ooh, she makes me feel funny in my no-no spot, <laughs> ooh, blah, blah. Welcome to the Reverend Mel Show, and now here's your host, Reverend Mel.